when I was in Goa, maybe five years ago, a little girl came up who was one of the children of one of the participants. And so obviously she saw her mother go to the meetings like this every single day, every day. And she came up to me and she said, what are you, what are you all talking about? Like that? <laughs> and I said, we're just, you know, we're just talking about how to be happy. And she, she just looked at me like, it was the, the weirdest thing. So why, why do you need to talk about that? You know, what's the, what is there to talk about? And um, you see, this is the point. We, as, we have trained ourselves to be miserable. That's, that's conventional life. And um, we, we train ourselves and we accept the training that says we are, not, we are not okay and we need to fix ourselves and we need to improve. And that, that, that training covers our entire experience. So even if we're, even if we're very successful, what do we and everyone else look at when, we, when, when we've achieved something amazing? What doesn't work? What was wrong? How can we improve it? It's never like, oh my God, we're amazing. Look what we've just done. Let's do something else. It's just like picking it apart, analyzing it. I mean, just talking about it makes me feel exhausted and miserable. And so here in Balanced View, you're given a very simple instruction. So there's only one instruction that you need to, or you're invited to practice. Um, but more importantly, there's a very simple support structure that's easy, easy to implement and use in the midst of your everyday life. Because it's, it's not about changing anything. You know, we've had enough of that. We've had enough of trying to change our lives in order to feel better. And it, it, it also doesn't mean that you don't stop trying to change things. What, what's he talking about? <laughs> so that was a rhetorical question to myself. <laughs> so you see, the point is, is that we've all tested this conventional uh, approach to life, whereby we believe that at some point in the future, if we change something about our thoughts, emotions and circumstances, we will feel okay. Now, of course, um, you know, being healthy, having lots of friends, having more money, um, maybe having children, all of these things, they do provide some sort of well-being. But all of you know, um, and I'm sure many of you have achieved these things in your life, some of them or all of them, there's always something missing. You don't feel like you've arrived. You don't feel, okay, that's it, now I can relax. And that, that will never stop. So that feeling that, that, that there's something missing will, will, will just continue. And for me, that, that, that was just a, like a perpetual frustration and anger all of the time. Like, what, you know, I just feel on edge all of the time, even when things are going really well. And, um, and we're, we're so amazing as human beings to be able to put up with such relentless negativity and still function even slightly, you know, is, is amazing. You know, we're, we're totally amazing. And, and also, we, we, we know deep down that there is something that, 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 that we can rely on. We don't know what it is, especially, obviously, when we haven't been introduced to open intelligence. But you see, this is another laughable thing about uh, seeking for the nature of reality. So I spent 20 years looking for something and I didn't have a clue what I was looking for. I had lots of names for it, but I had no idea what it was. So even if it came and bit me on the arse, I wouldn't know what it was. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just you, you have to know what something is in order to find it. That's just common sense, isn't it? So in the Balance View training, we can introduce ourselves to what we describe as open intelligence very easily, and that is just to stop thinking. So you can do this right now. You can just stop describing, stop thinking, and what, what do you recognize in your experience when you do so? Now, thoughts will, the thoughts will all, all come back. You know, Maybe it's a sensation. So it's only a split second, a short moment, that you, you stop thinking and you, you can recognize something in your experience. So in the Balanced View training, we call this open intelligence. It's, it's clear, it's open, it's an undeniable but maybe subtle presence. Now, 
So stop thinking again, identify open intelligence, and can you locate it anywhere? Where is it? I don't know. <laughs> it's where is it? It's like, is it inside? Is it outside? Is it everywhere? Is it nowhere? It's just like, it's very, very difficult to pin down, but it's easy to experience, and this is key. It's the experience of the recognition of open intelligence that we're interested in, in the Balanced View training, not in pigeonholing it and being able to fit it in with what you already know on a conventional level. And so the introduction to open intelligence, the stopping thinking, anyone can do it, and it's very clear that you already have open intelligence. It's not, you're not getting it. It's just a simple acknowledgement. So the, the instruction to stop thinking isn't the practice. That's just to identify open intelligence in your experience because, like I said, the thoughts will come back, the sensations will immediately come back. So the practice of short moments is just to relax and identify that presence whenever you remember. And you'll, you'll find very quickly that whether you're thinking or not thinking, that presence is there. And so this is the amazing thing about short moments. Is it, it, your life doesn't need to change in order to practice short moments. It's, it's your data, and so the term data in the Balanced View training is, is just a simple umbrella term we use to um, describe everything we can experience as human beings. So thoughts, emotions, circumstances, people, places, things. We just term that the, the, the whole collection is just data. And although that might seem a bit strange and a bit neutralising in the beginning... It's, it's greatly soothing because what it means is it, it doesn't matter how complicated you think your thoughts are. And when I came to this training, I had a terribly, what I thought a terribly complicated negative life. I was depressed, I had panic attacks, I was overweight. Um, and, and then I had nearly 30 years of uh, books and trainings and things that I'd read that, that proved why I was depressed and the reasons for this. So millions of facts just rattling around um, that seemed to need to be sorted out um, in order for me to feel okay. So it was very, very complicated. But when you apply this simple algorithm of short moments, that whole tsunami of, of negative data just boils down to that simple choice in each moment. I can recognise an open intelligence or not. It was just like, wow, this is, that's genius. Why didn't, why didn't I think of that before? So it wasn't complicated. You know, my life was, in fact, very, very powerful and a very powerful motivation to, to practice this one instruction. So in each moment, you, you, you have the power to either rest and relax as open intelligence for a brief moment or not. So the actual instruction, the only instruction, is short moments of open intelligence repeated many times become continuous. So whatever, whatever's occurring for you, wherever you are, in, in each moment, basically whenever you remember, <coughs> relax and just acknowledge the presence of open intelligence. And um, what you'll find is that, that that subtle presence of, of openness and spaciousness that you identify when we just did that little experiment with stopping thinking, it just starts to pervade everything. So all of this negative data and even positive data, rather than being constricting and maybe feeling like it's, it's trapped in your chest or in your throat, that was my experience, it, it, it's not. And what you start to see is that, just like I said, when, when, um, when, when you identify open intelligence in your experience and then you try and locate it, you can't actually pin it down. It's, it's everywhere, it's nowhere, it's inside, it's outside. It's just the experience of open intelligence, it cannot be described adequately. But it's, it's very easy to experience. But what you'll find is that is the quality of all data. So things like anger, it's not inside, it's not outside, it's, it's everywhere, it's nowhere. It exists, it doesn't exist. Oh my God, what's going on? Um, and it's very normal in the beginning for people to, um, I would say for the first few years, and this again, this was my experience, to have certain data streams that seem like they're nev never going to get resolved. Mm -hmm. Like when they appear, open intelligence goes out the window, I am angry. Mm -hmm. you know. And um, I've shared this many times before, but my, the solution to my anger before was to smash quite expensive pieces of equipment. 
I mean, I would be lying if I, I said swinging a mouse around like this and smashing it in the wall didn't provide some relief. But it wasn't the solution to my anger. And, um, and basically, when I went back to the music store to get a new mouse, maybe sometimes twice a week, the guy, the person that was serving me, thought, you know, this, what's this guy doing with these, with, with these ma mice, you know? And so, you know, the, the conventional approach to anger of, of either um, bottling it up and, until we explode or, or expressing it and smashing things or, or however it is, um, that provides temporary relief, but usually it provides more problems than it does solutions. So, so um, don't worry if you can't, you know, if, if you just get carried away with anger, it's fine. And if it's the same with jealousy or depression, the, 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 the great beauty of the practice of, of short moments is that it, all you need to do is to practice when it's easy for you to do so. And, and gradually, at some point, you'll, you'll, you'll be angry, really, really angry, and you'll recognise open intelligence at the same time, and then it's game over, because directly you will be angry and calm and clear at the same time. And it's the most amazing thing. And, and, and when that occurs for you, it might be a, li a little... Well, it will be quite strange, because it's amazing. And when that happened for me, and it did happen with anger, I was, I was just there like, oh, wow, this is amazing. And, and, and it was just... So I didn't, I didn't act in the, the same old ways. I was just going, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> but then as I got used to that then it enabled me to act. If, if something made me angry or someone made me angry, I could act from that space of clarity rather than anger. And sometimes the response is exactly the same as if I was acting in, in, you know, in a conventional way. What do you think you're doing? That's, that's really inappropriate. I'm being very polite here. <laughs> um, but most of the time I, I just laugh because I see that my, my anger has got nothing to do with anything other than my recognition of open intelligence. And it, it's just the most amazing thing. And so this is uh, definitely something you can apply with collaboration, whether it's with yourself or with others. You know, by relying on open intelligence, you're, you're instantly, intimately connected with anyone you meet. Like, so intimately connected, it's like your husband and wife. <laughs> or husband and husband. You know, it's just it's just incredible, and um, and and to be privileged enough to be able to work with people who are relying on open intelligence really creates super teams. And I, I can really say from the heart that it's it's just amazing to work with people who are relying on open intelligence, even if they know very little on a conventional level about the projects that you're working on, because that that um, open-hearted desire to be of benefit and just to to support. The other people in the project firstly allows you to allows them to learn very very quickly but in, ter in terms of me when I, I think I'm an expert at something when prior to balanced view if somebody came along and had a suggestion I, I, I would just reject it out of hand even if it was a really good suggestion and better than mine you know if I if I was a team leader for example because it, at that point, I think, well, to, to accept that on board, then everyone's going to see how weak I am and that my, my ideas are rubbish and, you know, just an awful, ridiculous, disempowering way to be with people. And now it's, um, it's the most incredible gift to be contributed to by anyone and to start to see that sometimes when you do things in a way that are just totally the opposite of how you would do them, the results are obviously surprising, but sometimes... In, in a really a really amazing way, and it just it just allows for um, collaboration um, and understanding that just really transcends the, the the really really limiting ways that we cooperate as human beings up until this point. Because what it means, most importantly, is you can can speak to someone and be in a group with them and work with them, even if their belief systems and assumptions are diametrically opposed to yours. You know, that, that, that wouldn't, you would never, well, I would never even entertain the idea of being in the same room as somebody who had different political viewpoints to me, for example. Because that would be the only thing that I could see. 
would be their political viewpoints. And of course, it's all my data, but it took this training to actually recognise the, the beneficial potency in my hatred and anger. It's not about me changing the other person. It's just me t seeing that that is the beneficial potency of really, really wanting to cooperate and, and, and help humanity. And we see this on an individual level. And then the penny drops. We, we have an exact working model of the entire human race in our experience. And when we stop trying to change things in our, you know, our own thoughts, emotions and circumstances and we just leave them be, all that we recognise is our own perfection and then we can't but help see this in other people. And then if we meet somebody who do, does have a different set of belief, belief systems to us, we, we, there's, a, there's immediately a ground of um, uh, communication and uh, on, a, on a collective level as well. This is, this is the way humanity is going to find complete peace, harmony and benefit. No, nobody's ever going to agree with you. There isn't one person on the planet that has the same data that you do. So how, how on earth are we ever going to find peace in this way? And, and, and quite clearly, for the last, well, modern history, when man st started to write, I don't know how long that is, 10,000 years, 8,000 years, it hasn't really done the way we, we, we um, try to solve problems between large groups of human beings is exactly the same as it was 10,000 years ago. People don't agree with you, you fight them until they do, or, you know, it's just a, a mess. So, really, don't underestimate the, 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 the power of these simple short moments. And, and just to finish, so there's the one instruction, which is the, the short moments. Short moments of open intelligence, repeated many times, become continuous. You're going to hear that a lot. But there's also the support structure of, of, of the training, which we call the four mainstays. <coughs> so the, the first one is, is the, uh, the practice of short moments. The second one is the training. So there's, there's uh, meetings like this, there's media, free media, really amazing creative ways that we can join together and share the training, share our own experience on the, it's, you know, on the internet and things like this, books. Um, and so reading, writing, sharing these, these trainings together. That's the second mainstay. The third mainstay is a tra the trainer. And some of you are starting the empowerments today. And when, when you uh, finish that training, you, you'll be able to have a personal OI trainer, open intelligence trainer. You can write to at any time and you can contact them at any time. And their sole purpose is to just support you in recognising your magnificence. And... Um, so that's just amazing. And then the community is, is the, well, then they're all interchangeable. So the community is awesome. And, and the thing I like about the community is it shows that this training is, it has trousers. <laughs> so um, there's an expression in, it, in, it, in, in, in England, maybe America as well, called if you're all mouth and no trousers, it means you're all talk and you, you, you just all talk. There's no substance to, to um, what you're saying. But this training has magnificent, <laughs> voluminous trousers. <laughs> and, uh, and, and the evidence of that is, is uh, the community. Like, it's, not, it's not about some esoteric mystery where we're all floating in the lotus position with long beards and, and uh, you know, just, that's just nonsense. This training hits the ground running. It's about practical benefit in the midst of everyday life. This is where it's needed, in your normal everyday life, with your friends and your family, at work with your colleagues. And it's not about ch getting other people on board. It's just about you practicing and becoming an example of the training. And then by default, pe open people become attracted to, to just this way of life. I mean, it's amazing to be able to be with people working with and doing things perhaps you don't like to do. Peeling potatoes is always the example I use. You know, how much data comes up with each potato when there's somebody next to you who's peeling the potatoes in a slightly different way than you're used to? It's just like, ah, oh, why don't you peel potatoes like, you know, like I do? And I, but I, you know, like, and, and when, when I was doing that, all of the data that would come up, it was just laughable, the things that were coming into my mind. 
about the other person, about me, and I could see the power in that. It's, it's completely dissipated and wasted if we just go off on the conventional route, which would be to just throw the potato peeler on the floor and go, I'm never coming back here again. <laughs> you know? And, and that, would be, that would be a good reaction from, from me. You know? <laughs> that would be, yeah, the most beneficial a action on a conventional sense from, from, from me. But to be able to, to just extract the power from all of that negativity, it, it's, just, it's just the most wonderful thing to start to see, just gradually in a very loving way, that everything you experience in your life is blazing love. And that, even that makes me go, ugh, blazing love. I don't like talking about love, but that doesn't, it doesn't matter. That is the nature of reality. I wish it was soccer and football, but it, it's not. The nature of reality is that, that everything, everything is blazing, burning, beneficial potency and love. And, and the evidence of that is your own thoughts and emotions and circumstances, your own, your own data streams. So thank you so, so much and um, just be gentle with yourselves, especially if you're new, you've probably got lots of data about not being good enough and you know how you don't measure up and seeing all these amazing smiling people. Um, but you see, it's just, it just boils down to each moment, you, you, do you rest and relax or not? I mean, it's, it's utter genius.